Well, joining me now on Talking Pines is Tim Montgomery, co-founder of the Centre for Social Justice, former editor of the Conservative Home website, and briefly was a special advisor to Prime Minister Boris Johnson on social justice issues. Tim, welcome. Very Lovely to be here. Good I, to see you. I don't think I've ever drunk a pint on uh, television before, so this no, is well, a first as well. Uh, well, I mean, I've always done things differently, whatever, I, whatever <laughs> I've done in my life. And the point of it is that so much of television mm. is, and you know this very well, is the confrontational interview. Yeah. And actually that becomes quite boring. So the idea is we turn this into a pub and we have a conversation. Um, um, I'm actually a viewer. I do watch these talking pipes. Oh, conversations. bro, well, I'm delighted. I've loved the ones with Anne Whitaker. I'm sorry, unlike Ken Livingston, I haven't turned up with a black eye or something. <laughs> but one of the things I like about GB News and what I like about what you're doing is you're so used to appearing on TV and you have about three or four minutes. That's right. And I think it's partly what people don't like is you can, you can make one or two points, mm -hmm. but that's it. And then a slightly longer conversation... You can well, they're sound get bites. closer to the truth. Yes, I mean, they're sound bites normally, yeah. aren't they? And also, you know, of course I'm somebody with strong opinions and strong views. On, I had noticed. On many <laughs> no, on many <laughs> things, and often controversial yeah. views, although they tend to become less controversial as time goes on, i found in many, many areas. But the point is, and what I'm, one of the things I'm trying to do here, Tim, is to say we can disagree on things mm. fundamentally but do so in a civilised and grown-up yeah. way. And that's what I've tried to do with all the... I did this debate tonight on 12-year-olds and, and should they be able to overrule their parents on the vaccine, and I feel very strongly, you know, if the JCVI can't make their minds up on this, why on earth should a 12-year-old be able yeah. to make that decision? Um, but again, I made sure we had good commentators on both sides of that debate, yeah. and people at home can make their own minds up. Yeah. It was Alistair Campbell when talking about politics and political movements and not just politicians, but all everything that goes with politics and debate in this country. Alistair Campbell famously said, we don't do God. Yeah. Um, and, of course, I've spent much time involved with American politics where they very much do do yeah. God. Uh, and, Tim Montgomery, you do God, and you've always done God. Yeah. And has that been a difficulty for you as a Conservative commentator? Has there been a conflict between what the Conservative Party wants and what your Christian principles tell you? Not especially. Um, there are other people who hate the idea that you have Christian faith, but unlike America, I'd say the bigger problem now in Britain is the indifference to a Christian perspective. It's not that the Christian perspective is sort of feared or opposed in politics, which is true, I think, in the United States. There's a lot of really anti-Christian sentiment. I think there's just the sense that anyone like me who does still believe in God or whatever, yeah. we're just a bit odd. But we're not really thought to be people particularly to worry about. Whereas if you look you know, at the history of much of America or Britain, my political hero is William Wilberforce, yep. you know, the guy who fought yep. against the slave trade. Then there's Shaftesbury, who reformed the factories. You look at Martin Luther King Jr., who really was one of the leading, Reverend Martin Luther yep. King Jr., who sort of was one of the leading you know, people to fight for racial equality. Yeah, there have been some extreme Christians who've been bad influences in public life. But overall, I think it's good when Christians stand up for truth and justice and their beliefs in the public square. And one of the issues I think you and I disagree on, although we uh, agree on most things, is the overseas aid budget. I think there's an awful lot of things that Christians have done to speak up for the poorest people in the world that are good. <laughs> no, I just, I, Tim, I just have a problem with poor people in rich countries giving money to rich people in poor countries. I mean, that's the difficulty that I <laughs> we have. We could discuss um, this issue. Well, I mean, but if, time, if but you're happy with these... If you're happy I, with I these think corrupt are, dictators getting rich uh, by taxing course, the like, poor, fine. Every use of government money goes wrong in some ways. In but some ways. Are, but there are people alive today because we've supplied malaria nets, we've supplied vaccines of various kinds, not the controversy yes. national COVID. And, yes, aid budgets are misused. I just wasn't ways. very happy about giving money to China, um, giving money to India when they had aircraft carriers and we didn't, and a space programme, giving money to Argentina, who still had a claim over what they call the Malvinas. I mean, I, yeah. I just found it extraordinary. And I, what I really objected to was, was, you know, your friend David Cameron, Oh, my goodness, you're really just, going uh, uh, blow the bell now, your friend. <laughs> I'm, I'm teasing you. You can, you can tease me back. I don't mind. No, but what I objected to was this arbitrary figure yep. being, and that's, being picked out of the air. Maybe there's one area that we could agree on, you know, because we're not going to agree on the aid budget. 
But one thing that I t- we're both patriots, we love this country. What, how the government cut the aid budget, I think, was particularly bad. In the middle of commitments that we had made to build a school in a certain part of Africa or supply a medical program, without any notice, mm-hmm. we pulled up the stumps. And that, for me, is just a fundamentally un British way. You can support 0.3%, you can support 0.5%, but, 0%, but to make a commitment and then run away from it without any notice. That, sounds, that, a is bit how like, the that Brit- sounds a bit like Boris Johnson's government all over, doesn't it? I mean, because you've just said that to me, and, and we are just 24 hours on from the triple lot going, which was guaranteed in the manifesto, although I think there was some mitigation for doing that, mm. given wage inflation. Um, but a Conservative government that has now put the tax burden in this country up to its highest level since Clement Attlee was in office, mm. uh, taxing another tax on dividends, which for a party that once believed in a share-owning property... You remember all this stuff? I remember all that, (laughs) you know. Um, I had a picture of Margaret Thatcher on my wall when I was at university, (laughs) rather than a picture of rock stars and things. But, uh, I mean, number one, they are breaches of quite serious promises. And the issue of trust in politics has Mm. been a huge... Ever since the expenses scandal... Mm the MPs' expenses scandal, which The Telegraph exposed rather brilliantly, I have to say. Mm -hmm. Trust broke down. I think a breakdown of trust contributed towards the Brexit vote in quite a big way. The fact that everybody supported it made people start to think, well, what's going on here? Um, I think it helped, really, our cause. We're both Brexiteers. Yeah, no, I think it did. The fact that most of the political class were united in saying, stay in the European Union. Yeah, the wall to wall. And and, and they had been for years. Mm. Um, but trust is important. Um, but it does seem to me, and maybe I'm being unfair, you know, you've known Boris Johnson a very long time, you've spent some time in number 10. Very briefly. Uh, is he a Conservative? It's a really good question. I partly blame you, though, for all the troubles that we're experiencing. Oh, I world. knew it had come back to me. <laughs> <laughs> because you're in this television studio. You're not leading a political party. Oh. You know, for a long period of time, you kept the Conservative Party honest. Yes. So long as they feared yes. on their right flank, if you like, that's a simplification yeah, of the a, reality. A gross simplification. Okay. But I know what you're saying. Yeah. You, so long as Conservative yeah. MPs and backbenchers feared mm. that if they didn't behave in a certain Eurosceptic or other way, they'd have UKIP or the Brexit Party or various uh, yep. parties breathing yep. down their neck. Yep. You kept them honest. And the problem for the Conservative Party at the moment is it doesn't have that electoral discipline well, from I, outside. I'm not trying to dodge your no, question. No, 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 Tim, I mean, look, I, Tim, just on that point... Mm. If I hadn't done what I'd done, Boris wouldn't be Prime Minister and they wouldn't have an 80-seat majority. The point was that Brexit was the earthquake in British politics and it was the Labour Party that have got the existential crisis over it rather than the Conservatives, who were very chameleon-like and quite good at changing position. Mm. What thanks I've had for it? Well, nothing, but that's another story. Well, that's an extraordinary thing. But that's another story. But But Tim, Tim, is he a Conservative? Boris, without, look, without you, we would never have had the EU referendum. Thank you. Without Boris... We're finished with me. What about Boris? Without Boris, I don't think we would have won the referendum. I think he gave a sparkle and a positivity to the referendum result that meant we got that 52%. He then defeated Jeremy Corbyn, which I regard as a huge public Wasn't service. Too difficult, to was this it? Country. Well, Theresa May couldn't manage it. <laughs> well, yeah, well, yes, <laughs> yeah, but yes, but yeah, um, yeah. and I for fine for That's the fine. basic. Yeah, so he's a wonderful cheerleader. Yeah, delivering Brexit he's a, and defeating Jeremy Corbyn yeah. aren't unimportant things. No. But at the moment, I think this government is barely but conservative. He, but, but he did those things as a cheerleader, and, and my contention is that he's a cheerleader, not a leader. And I'm beginning to worry that you might be right about that. Mm. But let's not underestimate mm. his achievements. No, 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 um, no, no. Yeah. They, they are significant. No, at winning elections, he's proved to be very, very good. There's no doubt about it. And people like the fact that he's different, that he's jolly. All of that works extremely well. He got on the Brexit bus, you know. Mm. It could have gone the other, his decision could have gone the other way. Mm. Whether he ever really believed in it or not, I don't know. But it almost doesn't matter yeah. because somebody had to finish the job. And he did finish the job. And I acknowledge that. And I absolutely accept that. Of course I do. But, I mean, where is this government ideologically? It's all over the place. And it's I, all over the place. I, you know, the state gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, there's no respect for... Just think of that Sajid Javid interview this morning. There's no respect for, the, no respect for parental rights. Mm-hmm. No respect for the family. 
mm. it seems to me. Well, the family no. is what you say, you know, to be start with the G word, the God word, yeah. the F word, the family. It's yes. absolutely sort of... No one in politics talks about it. And actually, uh, the best thing I've had in my life is the love of a mother and father who've done everything for me. You know, I've got the best mum and dad in the world. And people who have parents who are on their side, yep. it's the greatest <clears> thing you can give to a child. And a Conservative Party or a Conservative movement that mm. isn't interested in that fundamental building block of a good society, that doesn't even think about it, really, let alone do anything for it, is a problem. Now, we know Boris has um, a colourful private life. <laughs> but you go, you know, talk to a single parent family. Go to someone who, most people in my experience, who in their own personal lives through mistakes or, you know, whatever, bad turns, they don't, if they're a single parent, they don't want their own children to have a single parent existence. They want them, you know, bringing up kids is hard and it's harder when you're on your own. And so yeah. even when you maybe not have the ideal family life yourself, you can still say, I want, you know, for the rest of the country, for my own well, children, and, solid family. I'd rather like education. You might have gone to a rubbish school, but you'd rather your kids went to a very good school. Exactly. And, and of course that's right. And so the Conservative Party just needs <coughs> to be a little bit braver on the issue, I think. But, but there's also another group of people. There's nearly six million people in this country, mm -hmm. I'm quite a few watching now, I would expect, who run their own businesses through small limited companies or whatever it is, or they act as sole traders, they are risk takers, they are entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. they provide a lot more employment mm -hmm. in the private sector than the giant multinationals. They're vital to the backbone of the economy. They're actually where economic momentum comes from. Yeah. Momentum isn't just one or two big companies. It's, it's hundreds of thousands, millions of small companies doing things, growing. Taking uh, risks. And, and taking risks. And this government seems to have no comprehension of who these people are whatsoever. Mm. Is there a possibility, despite the difficulties of the first-past-the-post system, is there going to be a new Nigel Farage? Is there going to be somebody else that comes along, a splinter, a fracture, that challenges where conservatism is, is going? Or is it just too difficult, given first-past-the-post? It is very difficult. Well, you had the huge advantage, of course, is that when we were still members of the European Union... Had the European elections. We had the... I know. <laughs> by, <laughs> by proportional representation. Yeah. And that put... The BBC wouldn't have been putting you on their programmes if you hadn't won those electoral yeah. contests. Look... Yeah. I still believe in the Conservative Party. I think, yes. you know, it's, I, I grew up in the 1980s. Thatcher was, you know, my hero. Thatcher, Reagan, those yeah. were sort of... And they showed that you could change the course of history. Yeah. You know, the, by the, in the end of the 1970s, why I'm fundamentally a Conservative, why I'm so upset by recent events in Afghanistan, was it's national defence. You know, defence of the realm is the primary responsibility of government. And in the 1970s, the theory was that communism was going to last forever. And Thatcher mm. and Reagan decided it wouldn't. They did a massive military build-up. They basically forced communist states, the Soviet Union, to bankruptcy. Yes. And we won that Cold War. It worked. And I still... That is the Conservative yeah. Party for me. That's how I became a Conservative. Yeah, no, well, I... Without the Conservative Party, and with a little bit of help from other people, we yeah. wouldn't have had Brexit. Mm. I still believe in the Conservative Party. Well, the Conservative Party fought but, Brexit. Let's be, let's be honest about it. They fought Brexit. A lot of people... In, and, no, they fought Brexit, and then it became inevitable. Well, when I say the Conservative Party, you know, I used to edit Conservative Home. You I mentioned know. that. Yeah. Um, our members used to be so ferociously Brexit. I was always accused. <laughs> They're not really Conservative Party members, I was told. You've been completely infiltrated by UKIP. That was, well, a, that was a misunderstanding, because yeah. actually the Tory grassroots have always been Eurosceptic. It just wasn't the leadership. And oh, I know. The problem is, at the moment, I think there's a little bit of a cuckoo in the nest. The Conservative Party has been captured by people who don't believe enough in conservatism. Well, it's the, it's and the, I still it's, hope we can change it's that. The, so it's the I'm not running off to another political party It's the Oxbridge yet. posh boys. And finally, Dominic Cummings. Is he a madman? That, you know, you said I had a brief period in Downing Street. It was very brief. And that really was because I think Dominic Cummings is a genius 30, 40 percent of the time, but the rest of the time you don't want him in charge of anything. <laughs> and the problem is that the Boris Johnson allowed him to have way too much power in Downing yeah. Street. I said that, Sasha Javid said that much yeah. more prominently, and we walked away from uh, our positions at that time because it wasn't working. Well, I haven't been right about everything in politics, right Nigel, about that. but I was right about Don Cummings. And finally, and Tim, and thank you for coming in, uh, will you be on Boris Johnson's Christmas card list? 
Uh, I'm certainly not on his wife's Christmas card. <laughs> she's, un- she's unfollowed me on Twitter. So uh, I think probably not on his either. I That's think a... she, she tells him what to do most of the time, I think. Oh, that was a brilliant answer. That was Tim Montgomery on Talking Pints. <laughs> 